Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making this design of pencil case. Now I really enjoyed making the previous one where we used big squares but this one here is just so much more colourful and so much prettier I think anyway. So I hope you will join me in trying to make this cover and once again I am using a pre-made pencil case and I have the stabilizer in there. So it's a nice and sturdy pencil case for you to put your pens or even, you know, crochet hooks in. So let's get started on this one. So what do you need? Well, to start with, you would need some of those bright and lovely cotton soft colors. So this is King Cole cotton soft that I am using. I'm using all kinds of lovely bright colors. So choose whichever ones you want. It's 100% cotton and it's meant for a four millimeter hook. So it's a DK yarn, it's lovely to work with. So I have my selection of colors here. Then here I have one of those pre-made pencil cases, which we're going to pimp up to be looking much nicer than it is now. So here I have, of course, darning needle, my hook for the DK. I use a three and a half, so use whichever hook you usually use, and scissors. Now to make the uh, pencil case stand up a bit, I'm going to use some stabilizer. And this is Bozal in our form plus. It's a foam stabilizer. I've cut it this time. I've cut it this way because that's the piece that was on my larger piece. So I'm just going to put that around there like so. So there's no sewing involved with this. This will just be taken in with the crocheted cover. So the only sewing you will have to do is by hand with a needle and thread. Now here I have a colour separate. I have not used this for my squares because this pencil case has pink and this zipper here is just about the same colour as this. So I thought I would keep this colour here, which is the candy floss, for joining my squares and for finishing my pencil case. So for this project, I used King Cole Cotton Soft, 100% cotton and DK yarn in the colours Sage, Sax, Coral, Buttercup, Orchid, Lavender, Orange, cloud and hot pink. We sell this yarn in our web shop so do go and check it out via the link you will find in the description box below this video. So first of all we are going to have to make our little squares. So I'm going to assume you know how to make a granny square and we are going to make the center and then the second row. So really tiny granny squares. I have chosen bright colours and I've combined them to make fun combinations. So I have made 16 of these mini squares. Once I had made them, of course, you have to sew in all the ends. And then I arranged them into two groups of eight squares. And I made sure none of the same colours were next to each other. So let's get started. I have my eight little squares here. Of course, I've got another eight waiting to be joined. So let's make our slip knot, insert the hook, and make sure you hold your end in your hand like this so you don't start crocheting with it. And then you hold your working yarn, but make sure it's underneath your work. So you pick up the first square here, and you're going to try and find, this is the first chain, here this is the second chain. So find the back loop of that second chain, and pull up a loop. Then you're going to go and pick up the square above this one and in the corner here you're going to find that second chain as well, the back loop of it. You yarn the yarn around your hook and you bring it through and you pull up a loop. Then once you have these three loops on the hook, this one you're going to pull through the two other ones. So you make a V. There we go. So you go into the next stitch, picking up the back loop, pulling up a loop, go into the adjacent stitch, bring up a loop and pull that loop through the loop 
on your hook. So what you're going to do is insert and pick up the back loop, pull up a loop, you go to the adjacent stitch, pick up that back loop, pull up a loop and do a V. Pull up a loop and pull up a loop, pull through. And don't do this too tightly, do it nice and flowy and look at this, we have a nice V that lies in between our two squares but that is not standing up so it's nice and flat as you can see. And this is what it looks like on the back. So once you've made it to the end of your two little squares you do a chain because we need that for when we do the other direction and then once again you get started with this one so find that second stitch here pick up the V pull it up and find the next one it's a little bit awkward some of these things but you'll get used to it once you know exactly what you are doing there we go, and now you pull through the two loops on the hook. So into that one, pull up a loop into here, pull up a loop and pull through. And off we go again. And you might be thinking, it looks like Anya has done this before because these V's are opened up and they stick out a bit. Yep, you would be right. I did do this before <laughs> because I used a different colour and I didn't like it. There we go. <laughs> I'm doing it again. I'm much happier with this colour. So one more here. And one more here. So really on each length of a square we are doing eight stitches. Voila. And there we go. We have connected these squares already. So make sure these don't get twisted round. But also of course you can see that these are all facing the front. And this is then, you know, not facing the front anymore. And if you do it like this... This one will be twisted here. So before you do the other direction, the other join, you will have to uh, make sure that this V here runs nice and straight. So now I'm going to do the same thing for these other two sets of squares and I will see you at the end of the row. So I have made it all the way to the end of my row here and here I'm just going to cut off the yarn pull through the loop and I am going to do the other direction and basically it's the same thing so you're going to make your slip knot get started but of course now your squares are already connected so it's a little bit easier that they are already together but again make sure nothing twists around so here again we look for that chain that back loop of that chain Pull up a loop, then go over to that adjacent square, pick up that loop, hold it all tight and pull it through. There we go. Now once you've started it gets a little bit easier. And yeah, just hold the 
yarn underneath, bring it up and pull it through. So each time we loop up first and then we do a little stitch. Then when you get to the join you do a chain and then you start working on the next squares finding the back loops and pulling up the loops. I think it makes a really lovely join. So you're going to repeat this for all your joins and I will see you when you are ready. So here I have my two panels ready and as you can see I have not sewn in any ends. We will see what we can do about those. And now it is time to put these panels together. So we're going to hold them together like this. Good sides on the outside and I'm going to get started here on this side. I'm going to make my slip knot insert my hook and this time we are going to do a single crochet join. The reason why we did the flat V join is because I wanted it to be flat. This time I do want it to stand out to give the pencil case a nice crisp edge. So let's see if we can get started. So let's find the inner loop of this V here and then the inner loop of this one And let's do a single crochet. So we are picking up the inner loops, let me show you, of the adjacent V's. So when you get to the joint, make sure you find those inner loops and just keep going, I would say, finding the inner loops. But before you close this one here, lay the ends into it so you are taking this along into your single crochet. If this doesn't work, we will have to sew them in, but I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try at least... So lay your ends into the single crochet, seeing if you can take them along like this. Voila. See, and now we are getting this nice edge. And of course it is standing up. Look, this is quite different to what I was showing you earlier. Look, we've got a ridge, but of course this is going to be the edge of our pencil case, so that should be fine. And then in the corner, you're going to place two single crochets, a chain, and then two more single crochets. There we go. And this should give us a nice corner. And then we will continue with finding our inner loops and of course these ends are still there but that's okay I can deal with those see now they're out and I can cut them off there that's fine and we continue now make sure you of course don't go round all the four sides but you only go round three sides of this pencil case cover because of course the fourth side we are going to keep open. I will see you when you have done the three sides. Okay, so I have now made it three sides around. I stopped here and of course I have put it on my pencil case and you're going to think yes that is too small but you really do need to be able to stretch it quite nicely on both sides. Uh, it needs to be nice and snug around there so it will be okay. So what we're going to do now is a round of double crochets. 
on top because we do need a little bit more. This is not enough for us to attach it all to. And then I'm just going to see if it fits, it fits. If it doesn't, I'll do another round. That's how it goes. Um, all this depends on your tension, on the tightness of your joints, on the tightness of this. So go for it. Try it and see how it works for you. So I finished here with my last in a loop single crochet. Now I'm going to do two chains and now I'm going to start doing double crochet. So into that first one there and then here I'm going to pick up the back loop so a back loop double crochet and we are doing that all the way around. Now when you get to the join I'm going to do one in that corner chain space right next to the join. Then here I'm going to go into that V of the join and sort of lay my double crochet over at the end like that. And then do a double crochet in the next stitch there. And that way you have covered the gap here and you've made a nice extension of that join here. I will see you when you have done your whole round. So I have made it all the way around just doing the last few stitches here. It's looking quite a bit taller so I am assuming that I'm going to be able to fit it around my pencil case but of course we are not going to know that until we do it. So I'm not going to actually cut off my yarn just yet just in case if I do need to do another round. So I have here my pencil case with the foam stabilizer. Let's put it in. So as always meet up the corners really well here. Did I put the yeah. and a corner there and now let's see I think that will work so this will come to there and then this one here readjust the base to bring it up a bit look that will come to there so that's going to be okay so I'm going to cut off my yarn here pull out the loop and put it inside right so that's that now I'm going to bring out my needle and thread because that's all you will need to just go around the edge of your pencil case incorporating the crochet so I have my needle and thread here I don't know whether the camera is going to pick it up I've put it double so I have a double thread and then a knot at the end there we go. And what I generally do is I go into my pencil case near the zip here, underneath here, go in there so that you come out just here where the seam already is Then pull through your thread. And then now this time you push in your stabilizer and you pull up your crochet. And you come out also sort of right near the join there, above the join there for the two panels. There we go. So we pull it up and then of course you go in and out. There we go. Voila, we have lift off, we have started. So I'm going to try and keep the foam stable just below. So try not to touch it, but just bring up your crochet just right underneath the zip there. And if you're careful, you can do it so you can't see the little stitching on the inside. But I mean, look, see, I'm working underneath that zip bit here. So going in and out. There we go. And you can't see the white thread on the outside of your crochet. There we go. So I'm going to continue with this off camera 
and I will see you when it is finished. So I've made it all the way around. I've got here a little bit of thread left over so I'm just going to go and go back under that zip where we started from get under in there if I can manage at all there we go just push through so you're inside make sure you don't take anything with you that you don't need to and then just you know do a few more stitches here to just secure everything but yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out We've done another design for our pencil case, this time with smaller squares, and I really like it. So cute. There we go. So here we are. We've got our pencil case, zips up nicely, and we have a lovely cover for it. Of course, I made a tassel. What did you expect? <laughs> So there we go. This is our finished pencil case and I have to say, I like it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!